Motorola has launched the Razer Max HD, effectively a larger version of the Razer Max I liked so much a few short months ago. This time there's a 4.7 inch HD display, it's based on Android 4 from day one plus Jelly Bean imminent. There are the pure Android virtual control icons I like so much, plus the usual Motorola toughness, Kevlar on the outside and splash guard inside. Only a dual core processor but I still love the look of this. It's debatable whether it's going to make it across the world though every lead I followed ended back up at a CDMA model on Verizon in the States. Ah. Backing up my theory about budget phones often having the best speakers, bizarrely, Samsung's announced the Galaxy Music, an otherwise ultra-budget smartphone that has front-mounted stereo speakers that deliver outstanding high quality and volume. It's a 3-inch quarter VGA screen device, rather sadly, but at least it's Android 4 from day one. 4 gigabytes of mass memory is backed up by up to 32 gig on microSD, which at least should hold most people's music collection. Also from Samsung and just announced is the Galaxy S3 Mini. It's styled after the massive selling Galaxy S3, of course, and features the same nature UI, but specs are cut down right across the board for not much decrease in price. We're talking 4 inch screen, a dual core 1 gig processor, 5 megapixel camera, 1500 milliamp hour battery, plus either 8 or 16 gig of mass memory and a micro SD card slot. At least this one comes with Jelly Bean from the start. Just like last time, I've got people camped outside my house petitioning me to review this, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Have a listen. And they've got a point. The Note 2 does feel just like a big phone rather than a miniature tablet. Styled after the very similar Galaxy S3, this is only a, a centimetre bigger in each of the planned dimensions, though as with the original Note, your biggest problem won't be people laughing at you when you put it to your ear. I mean, people have got used to big touchscreen phones these days. It'll be where to keep the blessed thing. The Note 2 is pocketable, but you may not want to sit down too much. Things can get uncomfortable and you might break it, and you also won't be able to get it out once seated. A belt case would probably be a bit too big, so that leaves jacket pockets and handbags, both of which are ideally suited to housing the Note 2. You see, I've completely skipped over so far the bit where I tell you whether or not the Note 2 is any good. In fact, the hardware and software here are amazing. Uh, as with the Note 1, it's the best Android phone I've ever used. For media handling, so YouTube, Netflix and local videos, it has the largest and clearest screen, one of the loudest speakers, I'll demo that later. For web browsing, it's almost as good as my desktop. The range of Android applications is almost unparalleled. Applications like Google Plus and Flipboard, shown here, are a sumptuous experience. The battery is 3100 milliamp hours, enough for two days of heaviest use in my hands. The S Pen here is astonishing to have on a phone in that it's a full Wacom digitizer system with over a thousand degrees of pressure sensitivity. Boot up a painting program here and you're a virtual painter on a surprisingly realistic virtual canvas. Rather than just leave third parties to come up with art-based, stylist-based applications, Samsung has included its own S-Note system, which has grown into a veritable office graphics productivity suite. Just take a look at these examples built in. From text to scribbles to vector-based object-centric drawing application to voice notes and much more, this could easily be the core of someone's professional life. Everything can be exported to PDF or a humble image. Then there's the novel dual window system, Perhaps showing off the enormous screen, you can long press on the back button here and up pops a carousel of compatible applications. Now drag any into one half of the screen and bingo, you've got Windows. Well, kind of. I can see occasional use cases for this browsing web pages while working on or watching something else springs to mind, but it's a bit of a gimmick on a phone, if I'm honest. I could go on. The Note 2 has the same excellent 8 megapixel camera as the Samsung Galaxy S3. Here are some samples. Pretty good. Aha, some sunshine. This is test 1080p video recording on the rather excellent Samsung Galaxy Note 2. And a very decent loudspeaker. Have a listen to this. One day I'm going to get pulled off YouTube for these samples. Uh, the Note 2 viewed in terms of what I just mentioned and in terms of raw specifications is simply amazing. Even at just over £500 is arguably worth every penny. How on earth has all this technology become possible for the likes of you and I to use day to day in our pockets? 
and yet I don't actually want a Note 2. Well, OK, I'm a tech geek, of course I want one, but I don't want one, you see what I mean, even if I could afford it. And I honestly don't think I could recommend it to many people either. Uh, let me explain. As I've said on the Phone Show Chat podcast, Samsung has put a lot into the subtleties of TouchWiz here, especially with the stylus integration. The dock apps and interface subtly change when the pen is removed, for example, and there's the whole pen hover thing. Check this out. You have to be very precise about holding the pen just a few millimetres above the screen, but folders and galleries all get expanded to show what's in them. Add in a clutch of Samsung rewritten applications like S Planner for calendar, and in a mass of gestures with both accelerometers and uh, gestures with the pen for all sorts of navigation tasks that no normal person could ever hope to quickly memorize or master, and you end up with a smartphone interface that has the potential to make you massively more productive, but much of which will be totally new to you and will take time to get the hang of, certainly to get the most out of. By all means commit to the Note 2, but you might as well get an 18-month contract and get a good deal, since it'll take months for most people to really start flying on this thing. In other words, don't buy on a whim, buy and commit, or don't buy at all. Personally, it's all just a bit too much. I don't want things to happen when I tilt my phone or hold the S Pen just a, a bit wrong. I don't want applications which take over from the Google written originals. I recognise that some people will love the S Pen touch, gesture, tricks. Some will love going back to using a stylus. And provided we have a valid use case, then they'll be in Samsung heaven. And yes, the Note 2 is just a little bit too big. Like most Galaxy Nexus and Galaxy S3 users, I've eventually got just about used to having a 4.7 inch screened phone and making allowances. I can't even close my hand around this device. And so I worry. I worry about carrying it, about storing it, about looking after it. Tell you what, though, consider the Galaxy Note 2 is the most compact tablet ever made, the very first five and a half inch screened tablet. Hey, I bet Apple makes one in a year's time to join in and you're off to the races. Treat it like an always connected tablet. Store it like a tablet in your briefcase, for example, with the bonus that you can make phone calls on it when you need to. I did encounter some oddities. The keyboard refused to auto insert corrected words from my mistyping and I tried every setting I could to fix it. And despite the quad core processor and two gigabytes of RAM, why the heck does it take a full second to respond to home button presses? That'll be touch with sticking its all in, I think. The Note 2 does run Jelly Bean Android 4.1, but there's no way to really, really distinguish it from Android 4.0. This is the usual touch with experience, except it's been jazzed up and put on steroids. Should you buy the Note 2? Well, only if you really, really have a productive use for the pen input, the art insertion and so on. Maybe you're in graphic design or a student. Otherwise, the stylus is just an accessory that adds cost and complexity and worry. If you don't need the S Pen, then stick with the Galaxy S3, which is very similar, but more pocketable. More of a phone and a heck of a lot cheaper. Still, credit to Samsung. This is a unique form factor with a unique interface. And I'm all for innovation in a smartphone world that can sometimes get quite samey. Well done on the Galaxy Note 2.